So thanks for completing this section if you did it. Um, for proxies, proxy scanning. It is getting dark in here. Wow. Um, I will have to read the board again. Wow. Okay. Maybe next time I'll just have to actually just sit out in the library and then just drag the board back up. So this is a debriefing after our proxies exercise. Um, we didn't really exploit anything like I actually said on the board, but we did locate several vulnerabilities, and it's just growing up in severity. You know, it's just getting really bad. I'm surprised they still use this web host because a lot of people are, should be held accountable. Now, let me go over it. So what would we learn? Well, what became one exposed HTTP proxy, completely open, and I can actually impersonate the IP address of it, by using techniques, using NCAP. Um, we used our insider knowledge from a previous Nessus scan that found these proxies. We then added them into our proxy chain. It is so dark. <laughs> we added them to the proxy chain, and then we ran both the vulnerability scanner NIC2 and NMAP for us without giving away our actual IP address, which is critical because the proxy did a scan for us. It just relayed it, you know, our commands for us. We then saved the scan data in an XML file and imported it into a fresh Metasploit framework database. So we, we can now, um, you know, parse and look for vulnerabilities. Now that we know which ports are open and what services are running, we can do more detailed scans because we know which ones are web servers. Anything with ports 80, 443, 8080, or 81. 81 is a backup HTTP. HTTP port. Um, any of those IPs that we find out, we can actually do further investigations on whether or not it has a JavaScript framework that's outdated or whether or not it was WordPress, which would involve a lot if they didn't update their plugins. But we also found out something critical. We found out a Microsoft IIS server that apparently was running an outdated version of .NET framework these people would need to be notified immediately. And it would have opened them up to SQL injection and possibly some sort of exploit that's targeting you know, that specific Microsoft web server version. But we could now perform targeted strikes after a bit more investigations like uh, cross-site scripting, SQL injection, shell injection, not to mention a URL uh, injection, and cross-site request forgery. This is just a short list of web application attacks. There's a lot more to this. Web application attacks should be its own um, class, and I really would feel bad for the guy I'm going to hire that's going to be teaching web application attacks because he has a lot to talk about, much more than me. You think I'm going to teach you a lot? That guy has a lot, okay? Each of one of these is like their own little sub-discipline, and it could take you about maybe a month for you to go over every single possible step the web app guy is going to be in hell. Now, why did why is this even possible? Why How do we figure this out and then we couldn't even release any forensically identifiable info? Well, it's thanks to NEP administration and webmasters that have left an open HTTP proxy, which then other computers trusted. It had improper or too detailed host headers or HTTP headers or HTML headers that revealed even more useful info, like what version of jQuery they're running. And yeah, I already mentioned the negligence by both webmasters, but hosting providers are just as guilty. Um, people like Linode, I have, have I, I really need to stop bashing on Linode, but they are very late to the game when it comes to cybersecurity. And we, as we already known from um, the Microsoft Web Server example, Patches were not installed and some servers were outdated. You don't want to keep the servers running if they're outdated. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of unpatched exploits targeting Windows 98 machines, Windows ME machines, Millennium Edition. Do you remember that? I hated that. So multiple entities were at fault, but it all started with four open proxies that we were able to impersonate and get it to do things for us. That's the key point here. My recommendations, 
confront the IPs of in the owners and the webmasters and force server patch updates. If you have to, yes, you might actually need to replace the operating system. You might need to notify them, they might get mad. Who cares, okay? Update them, give them an ultimatum, give them like maybe um, a month, that's reasonable. One month for them to fix their problems, back up their hard drives, back up their website data, so that you guys can just immediately start patching uh, their machines. And if they refuse, or for some reason, you know, your management refuses, you can either quit or get fired. Good luck finding a new, new job.